G'day folks, welcome to Measure Twice, Cut Once. Today's episode, we're going to be a little bit more interactive. Um, we're going to demonstrate and talk today about the uh, usage of uh, jigs and sleds and things we have in the shop and why they're so relevant to what we do. So, without further ado, let's go and see what Hoss is up to. My little jig when I'm making pens. It cuts my blanks down to exactly the size I need for the tubes. Great little uh, addition to my workshop. So hello people, it's uh, Measure Twice Cut Once and uh, with a little bit of a demonstration of today's uh, topic. We're going to be talking about, we've probably visited this one before Hoss, but talking about jigs and fixtures and how, how important they are, specifically nowadays, what we're using in our operation mm. to make things. So uh, I've got a couple of standard things I go to and uh, probably not that many. I don't know how many you would have in the workshop. Well, I've got quite a few, actually. We are in your workshop, so yep. we've got a little demo on a few. Yeah, yeah. I've got, no, I've got quite a few just to make things a little bit easier in the workshop. Yeah. And I'm building another one as we speak. Yeah. Um, so I just need to get my finger out and get that done yeah i'm going to build that one too <laughs> are you really yeah, yeah. okay yeah, so. did you speak to him yes it's all it's all it's all sorted it's all sorted okay i think we know who we're talking about that's right that's okay right. um so but before that we're going to hear from uh, one of the show supporters and yes. uh, we'll be back to have a yak about the uh, all the good stuff in this show Hi Chris, we've got a problem. What's your problem mate? I need to get a sign made. Out of what? Preferably this bit of timber. I think I can help you. How? With my Bluey from Blue Calf CNC. How's that Rob? That's fantastic Chris, where do I get one? Mate, just give Adam a Blue Calf CNC a call, he'll help you out. Hey guys, before we uh, continue on with the show, we just want to make a little announcement that um, we need everyone's help out there to help keep this show going, Measure Twice, Cut Once. Yep. It's an effort, we love doing it, uh, but we need help. We're uh, sort of floating along, you know, and we want to get our subscription rate up, Chris, to up to a thousand as quick as we can. Yep. And we need the support from the people out there, so if you can, if you know people, maybe you can share the content with and you know, hopefully they subscribe and come on board as well. But go, yeah, go crazy. Just let everyone know yeah. about the show. Yep. And hopefully we'll uh, get a few more subscribers. Because Chris, at the end of the day, you know, if we don't keep building, uh, we're gone. You know, as yeah. simple as that. Yeah. And if, you know, that's the way of the world, but never mind. Mm. We're confident. We are. We still think we've got a really, really good show here and we yep. want to keep it going. Too right, too right. And we'll keep improving. Yes. Two different things. All right, so, uh, we showed a few jigs, Chris, that we've been at the start of the show today. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all part of being a little bit more interactive, I suppose, us just mm. standing here talking. It doesn't talk, paint yeah. a picture. No. Um, so we want to demonstrate perhaps what primarily uh, gets used in Chris's shop. I have similar jigs, but I probably don't use as many as he does. So, you know, Chris, in, in your woodworking operations, uh, what, what's your most go-to jig? that you find. Oh, the sled, for sure. The sled? Yeah. This one? That one there, that one right there. Okay, so this is the uh, good old table saw sled. Yep. Which you have crafted out of what material? Um, well, form ply. Yep. Uh, which is my go-to for all my jigs. Why? It, because it's, it's so stable. Yep. Um, it's smooth, it yep. uh, slides, it glides. It's really, really good stuff to use. Yeah, good, good, good advice. Yep. yep. Um, and just a couple of pieces of 4B2. Yep. Um, in this particular one, if you want to turn it around yep. for me. I'll, I'll put it up this way. Yep. The runners are? The runners are aluminium. I uh, got those uh, from Timbercon. Right. Are um, they adjustable ones? They are, yes. So you can make it uh, nice and tight or nice and loose, yep. so, but, so there's no play in the, um, in the slots. Are they, are they a standard size? or? They are, yeah. They just come in that length? 
Um, no, I, uh, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know whether you can get them uh, yeah. longer or shorter, but that's the, the only thickness that they come in, or the right. width that they come in. And the beauty of these is there's no... Well, where we live, not too much humidity, but if there are places in Australia where you have got a lot of humidity, yep. and you use specifically a hardwood timber, you know, there's, there's always a possibility of expansion and contraction. Yep. Aluminium stays, doesn't do a thing. No, no, just stays there. Are they little nylon type? Nylon bushes, yep, yep. so that you can um, put a screwdriver in here and it sort of comes out the other side, so yep. you can adjust it yep. to make it nice and tight or nice and loose, whatever you, what your fancy is. Yep. And I've also put myself a, um, a bit of T-track in here, mm. so I can put a stop block in. Yeah, right. So, yeah, that, that's the one I use. But that's my go-to. I use this a lot. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is my main sled I have, mm -hmm. my main jig in the shop. Uh, I find it's, it's really, it's, it's a sort of thing that's in between your, um, you know, being able to manage a sheet good safely on the table saw. Yep. And using a miter saw. This is in between the, the that. I think of, so. Yeah, yeah. It's a stopgap. Yeah, yeah. yeah so in between. And I too have the uh, T-track in mind, and I'm sort of I made an extendable fence so I yep. can allow a little bit longer um, cut dimensions. But I love it. I love it. You can't be without one. I and, reckon. And if you dial it in accurately, how'd you do yours? I did the the five cut method. Yep. Uh, from William Ing. Yep. And it is it is deadly accurate. Oh, it was just amazing. Once once you worked out the mathematics of it all, yeah. which isn't really hard now. I'm not a math guy or anything like that. So, but once you work it all out and you get you dial those cuts in, it is deadly accurate. Right. It is beautifully accurate. Yeah. I did it differently. I used uh, I used a square. And I, I just uh... it just look look. It all depends on your level of accuracy. How accurate do you want to be with it? Yeah. All right. I did the five cut method because I just wanted to see if I could do it. Yeah. That's it. Otherwise, I would have quite happily used the carpenter square, you know, those big yeah. carpenter squares, and just use that, you know. Yep. I, I, I sort of found, I, I can't remember the tolerance I allowed, but I, over the distance of the sled, the, you know, I, I found I didn't have much, hardly noticeable. Well, the only reason I know this is because I went through the whole process. Yeah. Over a metre, mine is out by 0 0.2 of a millimetre. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with that, can you? No. I mean, no. That's, that's as accurate as I'll ever, ever need to be. Yeah. So, it, It's... Look, I want to make a point here. Uh, a lot of people treat woodworking like tool making, and tool making is a precise art where you have the machinery that can make those components. Um, woodworking is not. We can do the best we can, but 0.02 mm. over a metre. Over a metre, yeah. You know, so. yeah, you're hard pressed to find any gaps. Oh yeah. So yeah. no, that's good. Uh, it's a great jig to have. I, I reckon it's uh, one everyone should make. Yeah, look, if you've got a table saw, you need a sled. Yep. That's, there's no, no, no negotiation with that, I reckon. Now, now, you have seen them on YouTube. There's a lot with bells and whistles that are oh. multi-purpose, yeah. multi mm. which, you know, able to do miters, uh, I suppose. What Cut all you? different angles. Yeah. 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 yeah Attach different jigs to them yeah. so you can do box joints or whatever. Yep. yep. But, you know, like... I'm a little bit like one machine for one purpose, uh, one jig for one purpose. Yep. Because otherwise, you know, you end up with a calamity of things and things can go wrong. Mm. So Exactly. That's a, that's a ripper one. Um, let's hear from a supporter. Do you want to do that again? Let's do that again. Yeah, we, all right. So. Yeah, g'day, how you going? I'm good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, there's a bit of a material going about called structure panel. Yeah, it's great stuff. Is this place stock it? We've got tons of it. Tons of it. Can I get a ton? All right. Or just start with one sheet? I'll give you one sheet to start with. All right, let me have it. Oh, that's big. Thanks, mate. Have fun. See ya. Another happy customer. Oops. So a lot of people, Chris, I reckon would question why don't we just buy the things we need to do the application for the project we're working on. So like, why, why should we make something? Like the actual jig? Yeah. Well, I put it down to it's just fun. 
Yeah, look, you know what? You have a lot of fun. You use up the scraps in your workshop. Yep. You have a lot of fun doing it. Yep. You can tailor it to your own needs. Yeah. And some of these jigs, now, I, I bought the actual box making jig, yep. the eye box. Yep. And I've used it twice. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I've you can't it. sell me that one. Are you, you sure? It's no, I don't want two of them. <laughs> it, it, it just, you know, the, the cost is. Look for me, it's prohibitive. Prohibitive. Yeah. Prohibitive. Is that the word? Oh, maybe. It's it's <laughs> it's big. The cost is big. Yeah. And um and I'm I'm actually making one now. Yeah. Right. You know that uh, that I reckon will probably work better. Yeah. And faster. Yeah. And less moving parts. And, well, I'm doing the same. I'm the same person. So, yeah. you know, a particular Australian maker who's uh, made a video on him. Should we mention his name? Yeah, Mario, Woodfather. Yeah, the Woodfather, yeah. He's, um, he's got a detailed plan, which is easy to follow. Yep. And, uh, I don't know, I just want to get a buzz out of trying to replicate and support Mario. Yep. Um, and not just because we know him, but, you know, if it's anyone in Australia who can sort of... And we don't have that jig... Give it a go. Well. Yeah. Like yeah. This beautiful bloody uh, form ply stuff. Oh, the form ply is a killer. It's it's grouse. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just think it's fun to do and it, it can also lead to the modifications to the original. It can, yes. So. And um, the one the one thing I, I don't think people don't sort of realise when you make your own jigs mm. is you're teaching yourself a new skill. Oh, yep. Right, on how to make that jig. And if it's not quite working out the way you get your, your troubleshooting skills, perfect. You know that's that's the other reason why I, te I now tend to make my own jigs yep. instead of buying them. In, in, in essence, I, I think it's a it's a woodworking exercise in its in itself because no. it allows you to stuff it up, make the mistakes, yep, modify it, try different things, and when it comes together at the end, you've not only made something that works, but you've achieved. Uh, breaking down barriers of you know making mistakes and yeah. and that will lead to you doing better projects and I quality so. of projects yeah, exactly you know yeah. so no there's, you know, there's there's always a reason we do things yep. um, Chris what what else can we uh, show and tell here in your right. workshop well, let me this this jig here yep this is for me um, my domino oh okay I use this for my domino I've now. Seen that. It's look. It's just a, a basic jig. There's only like two bits of wood in it, yeah. right? And what it does is when I'm um, when I'm making my cabinets, yeah. okay, and I want to put in a shelf, a fixed shelf, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I want to put in a couple of dogs. I use my dominoes as um, as locating pins. Oh, all right. For my cabinets, yeah. And if I want to put them in a certain spot, yeah. Um, because I'm working on melamine, it, it, everything tends to slide around a little bit on it, and it makes it hard to. To hold it yeah yeah so i get this jig and I, I basically clamp it to my workpiece i don't know if that can be seen but i, I basically clamp it to my workpiece yep. adjust it to the length i want and then i can butt my um my domino up to that and i know exactly where that domino is going oh what a good idea yeah and it's just i, I can't remember whether I, I saw this on another video somewhere but it was just something that came to, to me mm. you know i need mm. something that i can butt it up to yeah. And that's what I came up with. So, and all this is like two pieces of wood and a couple of um, knobs to yep. screw it all down with. And it works a treat. Yep. Works an absolute treat. It's fun. Yeah. 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 It's, you've, it's, you've got a domino. I have. <laughs> Get out of the box once and do a, yeah, do a bit of a jig with it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've got things, a lot of, so many things to look forward to uh, learning. Um, I, it's funny you say two bits of wood. I, I was putting up a fence once. Uh, you know, the palings, the gaps in the palings. Mm -hmm. All I made was a, 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 I cut a strip down to the width and I put a handle on it. And that was my guide once I'd set up the first. I actually used my um, my 1800 spirit level. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, I, I just popped in. That way I know that um, that the palings are all going to be dead level. They well. are, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you've done more fencing than I have. But, you know, for I, that got me over the line and... Uh, little spacing jigs I made when I was building a couple of decks. Yep. You know, I didn't have to go out and buy the Craig product or whatever. You know, but sometimes you get away with uh, well, there's a bit of wood. You know, screw it together. That's it. Bob's it's all it takes, job's yeah. done. Yep. So, no, that's clever. And does that perform anything else, or is that just specific? That's specifically just for that task. Okay. Yep. Okay. Could you modify that to do anything else? Could you put like a 
add on to it? I suppose. I haven't really thought about it. It's just something that I needed at the time. Yeah. I threw it together. It literally took me about 10 minutes to make. Yeah. Um, and, and I was away with it. So, yeah, yeah. Whether, whether I add anything to it or, you know, just make a different design, yeah. I don't know. But this one works perfectly for me now. So just thinking on, the, on my feet now, something like that could be modified to a dowling jig of sorts. Um, you know, you've got the, uh, oh, what's the one Victor always uses? His Dalmax. Oh, Dalmax, yeah, yeah. Now, that's, that's basically a block of steel. Yep. So if you can make it, you know, where it's adjustable, you can position it and maybe use that as a bit of a guide and work your way down, you know? Yeah. Um, as long as you're sort of pre-pricked where you, where you want exactly to. Exactly right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's not always an exact science, but it, no. it, it goes toward getting the job done. But that's what, that's what jigs are all about. Yeah. You know, you've got a task that you've got to do and you need to do it repeatedly. So yep. you make yourself these little jigs that help you with yep. repetition, yeah? So, yeah? so it's the same every single time. Yeah. So that's 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 all that was. Yeah. Repetition or one offs, you know, yep. they'll get you home and hose. So jigs. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. I love jigs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let's no, not let's not. As show shows going southbound. Yeah, today. yeah. All right. Uh we'll go and listen to uh, a wonderful ad that we made for our <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do uh better acting because we're going to acting school, so uh in the in the future. <sighs> yes. Yes. I know, I know. In the future, we're going to try our, you know, make them a little bit better. Oh, you'd have to, wouldn't you? You'd have to. Yeah. We'll get there, we'll get there. All right, a word from our supporter. G'day, Hoss. You look Harry. like you're in trouble. Yeah, Harry, thanks, mate. Um, I've, I've been trying to sand up this blank, but I just can't get it shiny enough. Mate, I've got a two-part solution from Custom Creations. Really? Does it work? Give it a try. I will. How'd you go, mate? Harry, that was the best stuff you could have given me. Look how shiny this pen's come up. That is superb. I oh, love it. Brilliant. Good acting. Yeah. <laughs> if we can say so. Yeah, yeah. Steven Spielberg keeps banging on my door. He does, yeah. yeah. yeah he doesn't bang on mine, but... Yeah, but got... He wants me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bit of an announcement for a challenge that's going on. It's the... Uh, I'm not sure the hashtag, but I'll, we will put that uh, specific detail and a link to a YouTube video mm -hmm. from the host, which is uh, Woodworking with Dash. He's hosting a make a box challenge. Oh. Now, if anyone follows Dash, he makes some, in my opinion, exquisite boxes because they're, they're not just uh, rectangular boxes, are they? No, no. They've got, they've got certain types of shapes. Um, he's, just, he's just very creative. Yes, yes. Some and of his boxes are out of this world yeah yeah so he's setting a challenge uh and i think as part of the giveaway he has a, he has his own book on how to make boxes and some of his designs mm -hmm. and uh so i think he's given away three books so that's that's well worth having uh, not all to the one person not to the one person because uh, a lot of us don't read that well no. but it's got photos yeah <laughs> lots of pictures yeah so look if you're interested um maybe uh yeah we'll put a link and Maybe some contact info yeah. or how you can display it, maybe on Instagram yep. and the appropriate hashtag for it. Mm -hmm. Now, this challenge finishes on the 30th of November this year. Yep. And all your boxes or images or videos of that uh, need to be in uh, after the 24th, from the 24th of November on to the 30th of November. Yep. And then you, they'll be judged by, I presume, Daniel. And he'll choose the... Uh, just have a crack at it. Just go for it. Yeah. 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 Because you and I are putting, you know, thinking caps on for this. We are? Yeah. What do you come up with? Well, I haven't used my thinking cap for quite some time. No. Well, me neither, mate. So, <laughs> good luck to us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, yeah. There's a there's a good little uh, challenge to look forward to. So, yes. get on it. Yeah. All right, so we're um, talking about jigs today. Uh, we're in Hoss's studio here. Um, Chris has got a lot more jigs than I have, but uh, we're talking about some of the most basic elements of how uh, jigs such as this can get you by mm -hmm. to do a certain work. Now, I've seen you make a jig when you were making uh, uh, some shoe cabinet. 
Well, a long oh, time ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, it was it was doing your head in, wasn't it? Just to get a repetitive type of. I uh, needed, yeah, I needed a jig that would uh, place because the um, the shelves were actually on an angle. On an angle, yeah. And uh, so the shoes were were sitting down, yep. you know, and um, and I had to make sure that the angle was the same every time because I had I think eleven shelves from memory to put in. Oh yeah. So I needed all those eleven to be exactly at the same angle, exactly at the same uh, distance from one another. Yep. And um, yeah, the, I reckon the jig took me longer to make yeah. than the actual cabinet itself. Because once the jigs were in place, the cabinet took no time at all. Yeah. But uh, just working all, all the angles and how, how to, and I had to make two of them because I had one on one side, one on the other. Yeah. So they're mirrors to, to one another. Yeah. And it was, oh, it was a brain teaser like you wouldn't believe. But yeah. I, I, I got it done. Hey, look, a lot of the time we can plagiarize a little bit off other people's concepts and ideas. And sometimes it just comes to you like this did on that occasion, you know, where yep. I have to have a solution because this is going to take me forever and I'll get wild. So you came up with an idea. Yep. You ran with it and it bloody and it worked, worked a treat. Yeah. So you know, mother. What is it? What's this expression, Chris? Necessity is the mother of all invention. Correct. So yeah, that's yep. uh, that worked out well. And they were just one-offs. I mean, I was never going to make another one of those. No. Uh, so. The jigs went into the bin after I finished with them. Really? That was it, yeah. So yeah. I, don't, I don't need them anymore, so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, just to add to jigs, I, I don't know, you've probably been into uh, places, cabinet shops and what have you, and they'll have all the walls lined with all these simple jigs, you know, mm. um, whether they're just for tracing or yep. um, they, they serve a purpose to do repetitive work. Um, you can see the simplicity that goes into a full production business. Yeah, oh, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, look, I've got those jigs as well, um, yeah. the, the the Craig ones uh, for my cabinets. I'm going to put my uh, Euro hinges in and yep. door handles. And I've got those jigs. I'll, I'll bust those out in a sec. Yep. And uh, but I use those as well. Yeah. And they, they were just they were cheap and they work great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Chris, uh, sometimes uh, things can get more high tech. Now, let's let's say if we want to purchase something down on this desk on this uh, workbench. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say this is your CNC bed, you would use tape, double-sided tape, or yeah. you would glue tape to adhere your, your workpiece, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, you know, some people go in a different direction, and some of the jigs are suction uh, held, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, there's the, the, um, the vacuum beds. You vacuum can buy. beds. Yep. Izzy Swan has come up, genius man, oh, yeah. with some solutions where he, he would have, a, like, a, a jig... Or a cutout template of a cutting board, or what have you, um, and that would be held on with suction caps. And he and he he just go along and he cut it to shape the workpiece, mm. you know, so quickly. Yeah. Whereas I, I I'm always in. Look, he's he's on another level. Yeah. You know, I mean, the stuff I do here is the pales in the comparison. Yeah. Uh, compared to him, so. But you try doing that like with double sided tape mm. on a route a bit. Mm. You know, I go shaking Stevens, mate. I just <laughs> you go, what if you know? Bang! No, it holds fine. Yeah. Double the uh, tape, super glue, yeah. tape, and then just put it all together. Yeah, yeah. Holds firm. Yeah. Let's uh, let's keep going here. What all have right. we got? What have we got here? We'll grab that jig there. This the one we used at the start of the show. Yep. This is um, the jig that I made. For cutting my pen blanks. Yep. When when you cut a pen blank, I haven't got anything here. If you cut a pen blank, you need to have um, a little bit of an overhang right. on, on either side of the tube, right? Which you then cut back so that it's it flush with the tube. Yep. Now to cut it, um, all I do is I stick my tube in the top here, mm -hmm. my blank in the front here, and it cuts it exactly every time yep. to the tube. I don't have to measure anything. I just pop them in, and away I go. Okay. So that's another little jig that I that I sort of made, and I think um, Dave from Mind Matter Create made one as well. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, similar, yep. similar but uh, similar but different. Right, eh? does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. And um, yeah, but it, again, works. I get. I used a little bit of form ply because yep. everything slides nicely on there. Yep. What the the knobs from Timbercon and just some scrap, mm. and away it goes. I had to rejig it. I had to cut this down because uh, I got rid of my old bandsaw, mm. and then I got the one from you. So this I had to rejig it so that this slides in there. Oh yeah. But other than that, it works fine. Uh, one of the repetitive things I see 
in, in most jigs, uh, that's used in most jigs, is the T-Track. Yep. And also these, uh, you know, little knobs, bolts yep. and knobs, yep. and nuts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, such an important part. I mean, you can make your own. You can make your own knobs. I've seen people make them. I've made my own. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but if you are, you know, 26 but, years to make a couple of them. Yeah, but or the, you can just, this costs nothing. I know. That's you what know, I'm saying. Yeah. And, you know, a little bit of outlay and you're away. Yeah. Away you go. Exactly. So, yep. No, really good. Um, yeah, so this is this works well. I've seen you using it a few yeah. times. Uh, it just gets the ball rolling for making your pens. It's it's quick and easy. You don't have to think about it. Just pop them in, cut, and away you go. Okay. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, let's um, let's maybe James James Finger's been a contributor to mm. Measure Twice Cut Once this season. He's been doing a great job. And I think it's time we said a big thank you, James, because your your two minute to fourteen minute tips have been brilliant. Um, Chris is getting used to it now. Yeah. Yeah. Some of his tips are longer than the show. Yeah, I, I push send to send the uh, tip to Chris, and then I, I turn off my devices because I don't want to hear from him. <laughs> you but, did tell him it was only two minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks, James. You're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a champion, and, uh, and, and his tips are good. Yeah. His, his channel's great, so yeah, support, a lot of people, James. A lot of people are commenting on his tips as well, so, yep. yep. No worries. Mm. Well, let's, maybe we can hear from James or some supporters we have, yeah. and uh, we'll be right back. We'll come back. G'day, bud. How you going, Papa? I'm good, mate. Listen, have you got any blanks from Mind Matter Create? I certainly do. I, I just happen to have them here in front of you. Okay, I want to buy them, please, because I'm going to turn some pens. It's a pleasure to be able to do business. Here they are, sir. And uh, many happy returns on your pen making endeavours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have to pay for them. G'day those who measure twice and cutteth once. James with Fixit Fingers here to answer the age-old woodworking question, do I need four drills? No! Well, if you don't, then let's look at the ones that you do. This one. My combination drill. Illegal not to do that. Firstly, it can do just about everything that you would need to do in a workshop and is the place where everyone's pretty much going to start. Getting one that has a hammer function on it particularly is going to mean that even light works in bricks and concrete isn't going to bother you too much. So why would you ever want more than one if this can do pretty much everything? Well, because like most things that are all-rounders, it can't do everything super well. This is an impact driver, and as the name suggests, it's not really a drill, though you could in a pinch use it to make a hole. It is for driving screws. And it exists for efficiency. Generally speaking, drilling holes, driving screws, one after the other is gonna be much faster if you don't have to go around changing the bit all the time. Which begs the question of why do I have a third drill? This one you might notice has a countersink bit on it and therein lies the rub. Very often I am countersinking as well as drilling and driving and I got this for free basically and put it to work as a dedicated countersinking drill. Recently though, I got bits that have a built-in countersink and they have pretty much eliminated the need for the third drill but as a luxury item it did come in handy from time to time. But generally speaking those two are going to be what I'd recommend for you to have in your workshop. This big boy has one job and one job only, putting holes into bricks. We did mention that the hammer function on this will work. I hung most of the things in here with this, but particularly when it comes to concrete and just the sheer ease of use, I've already found that this guy comes in handy. Now look, 
unless you are working with the hard stuff regularly, it is completely unnecessary to have. Mine even has a very handy hammer only function, which I have used for breaking up some concrete on renovation stuff. Much more of a DIY builder's tool, an SDS rotary hammer drill is definitely a luxury item in a woodworking workshop, but I do like it. So if the budget will stretch, I find a very good reason to own that being in an all brick environment. A last, last note, drill press. I only got that recently and I am very much enjoying the ability to have the confidence of going exactly 90 rather than having to eyeball it. That little Bosch one in particular, I'm plugging this time, is a great hobbyist style unit if you are just starting out. But really guys, if you got those, you're in happy land. If you got these, you're in very happy land. James fix fingers out, catch you on the next one. Hello Hoss, how are you Harry? Good thank you. I'm looking at doing a little bit of epoxy work. Yes, I can help you there. Do you have a product? I do. Who, who does it come from? It comes from Hammeroo. Let me have a look please. My my, that looks like a two part mix. It is a two part mix and it's a two to one mix as it says on the bottom. Is it made in Australia? It is. I might take a few more then. Well I only have these. I'll take those, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Harry. You're welcome, boss. Forgot the pipe. <laughs> One of the last little jigs Chris is going to talk about today is this, uh, this little spline jig. Spline. Spline jigs. When you, uh, you've made a box. Yep. And you want to reinforce the other uh, corners a little bit yes this is what i made for that i've got one of these as well but different to yours yep um but i i do think this is probably a better one than i made because well, you can't say that yours works to the way you want it to work and this is my interpretation of it no no that's right and yeah i, I see this is a little bit more safe than the one i've got because uh you, 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 mine is a little bit higher off the uh, blade Okay. I've got it straddling over the fence. I see. So, you know, your, yours is locked in here. That's that's the other thing I have to take into account. Because I've got the INCRA uh, fence, Yeah. I can't slide anything along the fence. That's because right. Because of the way it is, yeah? Yeah, yeah? So I've got to sort of think a little bit outside the box when I'm making my uh, my jigs. Yeah. So yeah. this is the uh, what I came up with. How's this bugger work, Chris? It's, oh, uh, well, uh, again... Tracks to, to run in my um, the mitre slots in yep. the table saw. No humidity down here. No, <laughs> there, there's a, I know they're only pine, but you know. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with the wall. Got a little bit of T track in here. Got a star knob in here as well, with a, a stop block so I can um, set where um, where it goes. Yep. I can cut on both sides of it as well if I need to. Yep. And through the middle, there's a cut here, and that's the box just sits in here, and I cut to whatever depth I want to cut yep. for my splines. And you, you reinforced it here, because it's obviously a, on the angle, so you've got the little uh, support. Yeah, it's all reinforced, so nothing moves. Yep. It's all nice and secure. Yep. Um, so, someone we spoke of just recent in the last segment, uh, Dash, yep. he, he makes a lot of boxes, so he's forever doing splines. And yeah, yeah. The what contrasting timbers with splines uh, make the product or the box or whatever you're making look pretty exquisite, don't mm. they? Oh yeah. It just gives it that little touch, like an inlay or. Uh, you know. Look, it has um, the 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 spline has like two jobs to do, yeah. Yeah. One is reinforce the box. Yep. And two, make it look good. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and you're happy with that? Works again. Works a treat. I probably used it. Um, I don't know, three or four times. I yep. don't. I don't make a lot of boxes, but yep. um, I thought to myself, if I if I am going to make boxes, I need a way to cut the splines safely. Yeah. Because you can't you can't just run the box over the blade yeah. and hope to Christ you're going to get it in the right spot. Yeah. You know, and yeah. So this holds everything in place for me, and it's it's repetitive. I I just got to see. I reckon once you retire from your work mm -hmm. in thirteen months' time, your <laughs> your life begins because you're going to go absolutely ape in here. Oh, yeah. You'll be making boxes and I've, you'll be making... I've been gearing up for this for... Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, as much as you see Chris, you know, he, he gets the stuff, but Chris puts it to use and, you know, it's a, it's a good idea. He's, your future is probably more exciting prospect than your current. I can't wait. Can't wait. So, I can't wait. No, and uh, as we've spoken to, it's a OH&S, uh, not O, oh, it's a... It's the mental space you need. Yeah, it is, yeah. So everything's related, isn't it? Oh, it does, yeah. yeah. If I, if I didn't have this spot to come into, yeah. I'd go loopy. Yeah. So That's why I turned my phone off. Why? So, so I can't hear you <laughs> complaining. <laughs> the only thing I claim, complain to you about is the traffic. I oh, know. I oh, know. You only have a five-minute trip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's a bit of a look, overlook... Uh, you know, looking at what jigs are possible, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It is, it is. So, um, in the comments below, let us know what you use. Yeah. You know, uh, whether it's their one-offs that you're only using, or if there's a jig that you use that um, your go-to jig, basically. Yes, yes. You know, like my table saw sled, maybe you've got a different one. Yep. So. Too right. Yeah. So Chris, uh, yeah, we, we thank everyone who has subscribed to us. We would like uh, to just Keep encouraging people to share our content mm -hmm. and perhaps encourage others to subscribe. Uh, we're, we're on a target 1,000 subscribers. Yep. Uh, we're not going to get there without people's help or supporters' help, for that matter. Um, we've been sort of talking with our supporters yep. as of late and uh, just ruffling a few feathers to see, you know, how we can propel the good ship measure twice, cut once forward. So let's do it. Let's do it. We can't do it without you. That's right. Not Uncle Sam, Uncle Hoss. Uncle Uncle Hoss or Uncle Harry. Uh, I'll be Arnie Sumo. No, that won't work. <laughs> All right. Look, we'll wrap it up for this one. Yep. And thank you very much, everyone. And uh, until the next scintillating episode, episode. Yep. I'm going to say, all right. Bye for now. Ah, okay. Is that hitting all right? Yeah. I can't hear it. <laughs> all right, so she's rolling mine. It looks like it's just looking directly at me. Can you see all this and everything? Chris, I've done this before. <laughs> Good old Collingwood forever. I am connected. There we go. Where, where you got that on for? You buy a Dremel. I've had a Dremel for years. It looks like it's ever been you. It hasn't.